I don't need to patronise you by explaining how destructive nuclear weapons can be. Suffice to say, they're pretty much THE worst case scenario, environmentally, politically, militarily, medically. Even a small scale nuclear war would be a humanitarian disaster. The Nepalese earthquakes multiplied by 9-11, divided by Deep Horizon. And yet a handful of countries, including mine, keep that power in the back pocket, and it's about to become a big talking point, because Britain needs to decide whether to renew its nuclear weapons by 2016. The current parliament will be the one to make the decision. And the movement towards disarmament is gaining momentum. The Vienna Conference on the Humanitarian Impact of Nuclear Weapons was December 2014. It was attended by 158 countries, and most delegations agreed that disarmament should be pursued, especially since this year is the 70th anniversary of Hiroshima. So this debate has never been more important for Britain. We'd never use nukes aggressively, i.e. to attack first, because nuclear weapons are so powerful that they almost inevitably end up killing lots of civilians, which I think most people would agree is bad when we don't have our philosopher sceptical hats on, and which is also illegal. Although, I do know some people say that the actual historical use of nuclear weapons on Japan ended up saving lives in the long run. But for the moment, put aggressive use off the table. We'll come back to it. But most people think that we keep our nuclear weapons as a deterrent. They're there so that we can retaliate if anybody ever launched a nuclear attack against us. You nuke us? Well, we'll nuke you right back, buddy. Mutually assured destruction. Imagine you're the British Prime Minister, and one day, a medium-sized nuclear weapon hits central London. Instantly, there's going to be about 2 million people dead. And that's just instantly. Over the coming days, there's going to be a lot more from fire and blast damage, not including the long-term radioactive impact on cancer rates. We're going to have to assume that it wasn't a terrorist attack. Our nuclear weapons would be pretty much useless against a nuclear attack by terrorists because terrorists are in hiding amongst civilian populations all around the globe. So we'll have to assume that it was something like a country, a nation state that we could respond to. Let's say it was the nation of Kaboom. Here's Jonathan Glover's big question. How does it benefit you to respond in kind? Two million people are already dead. And if you respond with nuclear weapons, you'll kill maybe two million more. And they'll probably be civilians. You won't get the people who actually launched the attack against you. They'll have all hidden in a bunker somewhere as soon as they push that red button. You're just going to end up killing two million Kaboomian civilians. Why would you want to do that? In his book, Causing Death and Saving Lives, Jonathan Glover asks, What would be the point? It doesn't fix the original attack. In fact, if the wind is blowing in the right direction, you might actually end up making your own situation worse. It's just a sort of petty act of revenge. Even in the specific circumstance for which we keep nuclear weapons, Glover says there would still be no point in using them. Well, okay, maybe we would never have a reason to use nuclear weapons. But they're a bluff. We'd never really use them, even if somebody nuked us. But don't tell anybody that, for the love of God! Because if anybody found out that Britain wouldn't actually defend itself using nuclear force, then you never know what kind of sinister plans might be put in. I mean, put in to action. Well, Glover anticipates that. He says if you're gonna bluff, you're gonna have to bluff everybody. Not just the rest of the world, but your own people. Because if they all know that you'll never use nukes, then on Twitter and social media and everything, it's gonna get out eventually. You're gonna have to lie to everybody and have a pretty good pa 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 poker face. And whilst you're lying, you might actually end up convincing the politicians of the future that a nuclear response would be justified. And if you're gonna fake it, there are better ways of faking it than actually having them around. You could I don't know, get big polystyrene missiles and hold them really close to the camera, or stage the occasional submarine drill or something. At the very least, 
it would be cheaper. Nukes are expensive. I think I'm right in saying that Britain's nuclear deterrent is the most expensive thing our military does. According to the British American Security Information Council, we could save £83 billion by cancelling it over the next 30 years. Now, exactly how much money we could save by not renewing Trident is a bit contentious. Basic says £83 billion, Greenpeace and a few other people in the media seem to be saying £100 billion. that's the number that's floating around, but even the most conservative numbers represent a significant chunk of change. We could really do a lot of good with that money that's just sitting around in the silos. We could build a lot of hospitals or build a lot of schools or take a lot of people off food banks or pay a lot of tuition fees. If you don't have any nuclear weapons, it's also impossible for you to have an accident with them or for them to be stolen. Now it's pretty unlikely that that's going to happen with the system that we have, unless that whistleblower from the Royal Navy who's been in the news lately is actually correct, but it's not as unlikely as not having them would make it. Glover also asks us to consider the precedent that we might set by disarming. If we agree that global nuclear disarmament would be a good thing, then Britain could be the country to lead the way on that. We could start the trend. Or imagine the trend that we could start if we renewed our nuclear weapons, going against the non-proliferation treaty, which we have already signed. How's that going to look if foreign powers start trying to build nuclear weapons and we're going to them saying, we don't want you to do that? We're going to look like massive hypocrites. So this question is going to have a big impact on our foreign policy as well. There's still some reluctance to get rid of the bomb, though. When this is talked about in public spheres, people mention leaving the country vulnerable without its nuclear weapons. Even if we can't think of a reason to ever use them, since the stakes are so high, is it the scenarios that we can't anticipate? And is it the reasons we can't think of that make them so valuable? Well, the reason we can't think of is necessarily blank. It's not really a reason at all. The person who makes this argument is saying, look, there is a reason that we should keep nuclear weapons. I just can't tell you what it is because I don't know. And I'm kind of going, well... When you can think of a reason, why don't you get back to me? Note also that the reason we can't think of is generalizable. Shall we build 10 new aircraft carriers at the cost of 30 billion to the British taxpayer? Uh, no, there's no reason why we'd need to do that. Ah, but it's the reasons we can't think of that really matter. Oh, and by all means, go right ahead. Why don't we build a second Big Ben while we're at it? And uh, a backup Scotland and uh, a 50-foot robot fire-breathing Margaret Thatcher. There's no reason why we'd need any of that that I can think of, but it's the reasons that we can't think of that really make it valuable. So I don't think that nuclear weapons are worth keeping around as a deterrent, at which point the question becomes, look, heads of MI6, MI5 and the MOD, are we likely to be in a situation like World War II Japan again, where we need to use nuclear weapons aggressively? Is that something we're likely to have to face? And what steps could we take with our foreign policy that might be cheaper and safer to avoid getting into those situations in the first place? Remember that a lot of the rest of the countries of the world, including ones who are under much graver military threats than us, manage just fine without them. Whether or not we're likely to have to use nuclear weapons aggressively is, I think, the deciding factor in whether or not we keep them. And that question might have different answers for you, depending on what country you live in. Although remember that using nuclear weapons aggressively would mean the mass murder of potentially millions of civilians. Like I said, this issue is really important for my country right now. The Conservative Party, who are the current government, have said that they want to renew Britain's nuclear weapons, and this question is only going to get more discussed and bigger and bigger in the coming months. So I am going to send this video to my MP and also to the Prime Minister. I doubt very much whether either of them will actually end up watching it, but you feel free to share it with anyone who you think might benefit from watching it if you think that it's important too. Full disclosure, because you guys deserve to know, this episode was commissioned by the Nuclear Information Service. They're a non-profit, non-partisan organisation who distribute information to the public relating to nuclear disarmament, and you can find links to their stuff in the description. But I wrote the script for this episode before I contacted them. They helped me with the facts and the figures and the legal details. So even though I was paid to say this by people who do have a particular opinion on it, 
it is also exactly what I would have said even if that wasn't the case. It does accurately reflect what I think is the correct answer to this question. But what do you guys think? Should Britain get rid of its nuclear weapons? And more importantly, because everyone keeps asking that in the papers, why? Why should we keep them or get rid of them? And for more philosophical videos every Friday, please subscribe. I've spat on the lens. That's how much of an actor I am, is that I projected so much that I actually spat onto the lens. <laughs>